Find new outlets for your life through the YWCA. Well, Mr. Marino doesn't think you have a chance in the world of winning. Well, I don't care what Mr. Marino thinks. Oh, you should. After that performance you gave on the stand. Listen, Cecile, if uh, I... Stop, stop it, both of you. <laughs> you are a tender man. A wild man. <laughs> and a caring man. All rolled into one. Well, we're definitely partners now. Oh, yes. In so many ways. <laughs> I know that you want to take care of Rachel. But she needs time to work through her grief, and if she wants to do that alone... Oh, I'm not sure she wants to do it alone. She just doesn't want to do it with me. Maybe a little higher, closer. That's beautiful now. Look at her, not us, and give us a motherly, very beautiful smile. That's wonderful. That's a wonderful shot. Now hold it. Hold it, please. So that explains why Cecile came to Maggie before she went to court today. Jamie, are you all right? Yes. You know, I was driving over here, and I was thinking... I was at the service, and I suddenly realized I'm no longer the next generation. I'm responsible for those left behind. It's a little frightening. I don't know if I'm ready for it. Well, for whatever it's worth, I think you're ready. Thank you. It's worth a lot to me. Listen, I'm not nervous about this afternoon, if that's what you're worried about. Actually, um, I wanted to stop you from going over to the courthouse. What? I'm going to testify for Sandy. I know you Sandy. want to, Jamie, but Sandy has absolutely refused to let you testify for him. Why? Well, there are several obvious reasons, the first of which is that your father has died and the memorial service for him was just this morning. I told you, I can handle that. I am merely expressing Sandy's concerns, Jamie. What are his, uh, what are the, what are his other reasons? Sandy feels that enough people already have suffered because of this fight to get custody for Maggie. I am fully prepared to go on the stand and talk about my problems with drugs and my cure. Jamie, I my don't... My cure was interrupted by Cecile feeding me drugs without my knowing it. She made everyone think I was addicted again. There's proof Jamie, that Cecile bought Marino the drugs. Jamie, Marino will cross-examine you about your drug problem and he will rip you apart in an attempt to discredit you as a witness Only for Sandy. Only a few days ago. You thought it was imperative that I testify against I'm Cecilia. aware of that. So what made you suddenly change your mind? I haven't changed my mind, but I have got to obey Sandy's wishes in this case. It's vital for me! Did Sandy get Maggie away from Cecile? <sighs> Jamie, I can understand why people who know Cecile fit the, they feel that she's an unfit parent, but you are, you're obsessed with this. Yes, I am. Well, could you please tell me why? Because I think Maggie is my daughter. What? You heard me. It's a possibility. Jamie, if you really think that, you could... What? Claimer is my daughter? Sue for custody myself? Oh, I've thought about that. I thought about that a great deal. But even if I could prove that I'm her father, what would that do to Maggie? Sandy's been her father. 
How could I do that to Sandy after all the time that's passed? That I've let pass. After everything that's happened. Especially my problem with drugs. Jamie. So now do you understand why I'm so obsessive on the subject? Yes. I know Cecile better than anyone. She is a very destructive and dangerous woman, and I know she will always place her own selfish needs before Maggie's. I won't let that happen. But how do you feel about it? Maggie that? is the most important one here. She's the one that has got to be protected at all costs. Does Sandy have it? Does he even suspect that you might be Maggie's father? No. I don't think so. But that's not the point. The point is we have got to get that little girl away from Cecile as soon as possible. And Sandy's our only chance. I'll do whatever I can do to help him. And if that means testifying, I'll gladly do it, whatever the consequences. Well, I understand it all now. But I still have got to go along with Sandy's wishes. Sandy does not want you to take the stand. So I can't call you. This part of another world is brought to you by Ivory Liquid. The mild dishwashing liquid with rich, soft suds to gentle your hands. Ivory Liquid helps hands look young. Did Stacy call and tell you the hearing's going to be delayed an hour today? Yeah, she did. Well, I thought I might as well, I don't know, stop by and see Maggie for a while, if that's all right. Sure, come on in. Great, thanks a lot. Um, I saw a couple of guys leaving from your house. Who uh, they? Yeah, they were um, some newspaper photographers, and I'm afraid you're going to have to wait to see Maggie. She has a visitor already. <laughs> Cloth coat and all. Oh, great. Photographers, huh? I bet this is something uh, Marino set up for Cecile. Well, I'm reasonably sure of it. Oh. <laughs> They're talking about me? No, actually, we were talking about photographers. Oh. I really wish they'd leave me alone. They've been hounding me unmercifully. Yeah, I bet they have. Where are you off to now? Going to the courthouse to pose for some more pictures? You know, Sandy, you could put an end to all this aggravation for everyone's sake. Could I? And how? Drop the suit. And give you custody of Maggie? Not a chance. Well, Mr. Marino doesn't think you have a chance in the world of winning. Well, I don't care what Mr. Marino thinks. Oh, you should. After that performance you gave on the stand. Listen, Cecile, if uh, I... Stop, stop it, both of you. Why don't you run along to the courthouse, Cecile? See what kind of dirty tricks you can cook up with your famous lawyer. Speaking of dirty tricks... I understand your not-so-famous lawyer intends to put Elena and Jamie on the stand this afternoon. My own mother. Well, whatever happened to all that mother love you talked so much about at one time? At one time, Cecile, I wanted more than anything in the world for us to have a chance at a life together again. I hope that you could trust me, love me again. I truly wanted that. Oh, and you don't want that anymore. Cecile, I have always loved you. And yet there comes a time when even a mother can give just so much without receiving anything in return. So you're going to testify against me? No, Cecile, I'm going to testify for Maggie's well-being. Well, that's an interesting rationalization. Well, it's the truth, whether you believe it or not. 
I've come to love Maggie. I'll as save it for the oh, witness Cecile, stand. Please, please Elena, you. there's no point in discussing love with Cecile. She doesn't know the meaning of the word. If you think that you had it tough on that witness stand, you just wait until Marino cross-examines Jamie and Elena. He'll destroy them. I wouldn't count on it, Cecile. Well, we'll see soon enough, won't we? Excuse me, I have to go home and change. Maggie's fingers were a little sticky and she just couldn't keep her hands off me. Bye, Mommy. If that judge gives custody of my daughter to that selfish, unfeeling, ungrateful Sandy, little... I know just how you feel, but try and calm down. Oh. Look, she wanted to upset us and she did. Now, let's just forget it. Oh. Anger clouds judgment. And we don't want that in the courtroom. Oh. I only hope that Somehow, Jamie and I can influence the judge's opinion about Cecile. Elena, I don't want Jamie to testify. Does he know that? Well, I hope Stacy's talking to him about it right now. And Elena, I'm not so sure I want you to go through this. What? Uh, forget it. You go upstairs now. Get some of those sticky fingers all over your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, I wonder if Cecile forgot something. Listen, do you want me to get no, that? No, no, you uh, go upstairs. You've argued enough with Cecile for one day. All right, thank you. Oh, Brian, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Oh, oh please come in. Can I take your coat? Listen, I uh, passed Cecile as I was pulling into the driveway. Uh, yeah, she stopped by to pose for some uh, newspaper photographers. <laughs> Can I get you some coffee or tea? No, thank you. Ah. You know, I um, I spoke to Sally after the service for Steve. She she really appreciated the fact that you were there. It was a very moving service. Sally thought so too. You know, she and Jamie seem to be holding up quite well. I'm glad to hear it. I. Uh, I talked to Stacy earlier, and uh, she told me that you were going to testify this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if there was some way that I could be of help. Oh, Brian, thank you. I don't really think there's anything you can do to help me, but... I think your old friend Mac Corey could use some help just now. Mac? Mm-hmm. I'd appreciate it if you might go by the complex for a minute. I, uh, I really would appreciate it very much. Well, of course I'll go, but what's the matter? Something very strange has happened between Mac and Rachel. partners now. Oh, yes. In so many ways. <laughs> and we never got around to settling on a name for our new company, did we? No, but I'm sure we will. Mm. You have to go. I'm afraid so. I have to take care of some business and then I have to check in at the complex. You gave two weeks' notice? Yes. And, uh, I feel obliged to complete some projects that I'm in the middle of right now. You are so honorable. <laughs> I want you to stay. I know, but Julia's gonna be here any minute, remember? Oh, yes. Young Julia. Julia means work. 
You know that I am her role model for work and industry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure you are. <laughs> well, if you're going to desert me, then I think I'll spend the rest of the day relaxing. <laughs> but I will call my publisher and tell them I'm not renewing my contract. I have a feeling they're not going to be very happy when they hear that news. That's their problem. There. And tomorrow, I start my first book for our new company. <laughs> you really don't waste any time, do you? Never. Remember that. I will. Okay. I know it will help me enormously to be writing for my own company. And I'm sure I will do my best for it. Passion's Progress. The title of my new book. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it exciting? Passion's Progress. Passion's Progress. Yeah, I like it. It's, it sounds fascinating. You know, I must arrange for a press conference. Oh, what are you going to do about getting a company to... Publicize our releases. I'll work on that right away. I have some ideas about that. Uh, I have some ideas, too. Tonight. We'll do more tonight. Uh, the door. <laughs> ah, hi. Julia, hello, hello. Are uh, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Well, uh, Cass and I have been busy uh, planning our strategy for our publishing house. Uh, we got a lot accomplished, didn't we, Cass? We did indeed. We said an awful lot of nice things about you too, dear. Julia, would you rather not work today? No, no. I want to work. I want to work very hard. Well, often that's the best therapy. I have to get going. Talk to you later, Felicia. Yes, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, Cass, you got lipstick on your collar. What? No, the other side. Oh. Uh, <laughs> thanks. I think I'd better go up to the penthouse and change before I go to the office. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Tell them why you would be out the rest of the day? Yes, I did. Honey, I appreciate what you're doing, but I'm going to have to talk, talk to Roy and somebody else later on about getting a temporary secretary. Yeah, me. well, you're really going to need one if this phone keeps ringing like this. Hi, Quinn. Oh. Come see me. Hi, Jamie. Can I come in for a minute? Sure, of course. I'm glad you, you come. Um, I just wanted to tell you, you said some really very beautiful things this morning. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's nice of you to help Quinn this morning. Oh, she's been a savior. There have been so many phone calls of sympathy and expressions of love and respect for Steve and, of course, lots of business calls. That's great. I saw my mother a few minutes ago. How is she? Well, the doctor says she's recovering physically. She told me that she would come by after the service. Yes, I did. Well, that really lifted her spirits. Thank you. I told her I would try to keep Quinn's instruction going. That's really wonderful, Quinn, because, uh, well, it's great for my dad because he spent a whole lifetime almost building this company, and, and for my mom, too, because it's helping her through her grief. Well, it works both ways. I, uh, it helps me through my grief, too. Yes, I guess it does. I appreciate Ready your coming by to tell me about Rachel. I'm sorry, she's busy Well, I just moment. wanted you to know. May I speak to Quinn Harding, please? I'm Quinn Harding. Oh, hi. Uh, I'd, may I speak with you a moment? Um, well, I'm, I'm trying to find some estimates your dad made. Oh, well, I'll, I'll let uh, you get back to work. Quinn. Okay. I'll, uh, Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Thomasina? Hi. Hi. Uh, is this a bad time? Oh, it... well, hi. That was a man from the Booker Company. Something about an estimate. That's exactly what I'm looking for. It has Booker on the front page. Would you please look in the file cabinet? Sure. Would you like me to answer that? Would you? Sure. Just take a message. Hello, Frame Construction. Uh, she's busy right now. Uh, may I take a message? All right, fine. 
Okay. Okay, no problem. Goodbye. Hello, frame construction. No, she's busy right I now. I can't ask you to do this. It's okay. Uh, can I help you? Right. Oh, hi! My goodness! Cecile, what are you doing here? I thought you'd be at the courthouse. Well, the hearing was delayed for an hour. When I was seeing Maggie, she had some sticky stuff on her fingers and she got it on my blouse, so I oh. came home to change. And uh, Louie and Marino aren't here. They've gone to the courthouse. Oh, they have? Yes, my darling, so we are alone. Well, I, I've got to get oh, back to the office. Oh, you've got to do work or... Who's lipstick? Stay tuned for the next part of Another Work. Lipstick. Yes. Lipstick. It could be yours from just no, now. No, no, it's not mine. I loathe that flashy shade. <laughs> <laughs> it's Felicia. Felicia is a kisser. She kisses everybody. The woman should have been in politics. And that's why I'm here, because of the lipstick. Just as you're here because of Maggie's sticky little fingers. <laughs> well, what did Felicia have to kiss you about, Kat? Oh, Cecile, I mean, a person could say, good morning, Felicia, and she kisses him, you know, or it's raining out, or isn't it a nice day? The woman just loves to kiss. <laughs> Obviously, by the amount of lipstick on the collar. Actually, I had something a little more important than any of that to say to her. Really? Like what? I'm leaving Corey Publishing. I'm forming my own publishing company with Felicia Gallant as my very first author. And if you don't know what kind of insurance that is, you don't know anything about publishing. Oh, I've worked for Matt Corey long enough to know a little bit about the publishing business. Then you understand the lipstick. So you left Mac. And you took Felicia. <laughs> that was your secret, wasn't it? Oh, I've got to hand it to you, Cass. But Cass. Something I'm sure you know by now. You and I are tied together. We, uh, we need each other. Oh, we do, we need each other. And we want the same things. I know that. Tonight, we have to be together tonight, no matter what, okay? Yes. Okay. yes. Mm. Uh, Miss Harding will call you back. Ten minutes. In ten minutes. Okay, fine. Thomasine, have you finished the label for this envelope? Just finished. Mm -hmm. Should have been mailed yesterday. Fine, no problem. Thank you. Thank you for helping out in a small crisis. No problem. I know you don't know what's happened Well, I, I do sort of know what's happened. Um, I know who Steve Frame was. When I came here earlier, I just didn't connect the name and the company, but I'm, I'm really sorry about the accident. Thank you. It's all finished, Clint. I'll mail that if, if you'd like me to when I leave. Oh, well, I appreciate the offer, but I can't ask you to do... I, I know I said I would talk to you uh, earlier today, but, well, there really isn't any work right now. Maybe, maybe you could come in tomorrow. Oh, I'm not going to have time to see you tomorrow. Well, I can cut out from school tomorrow, too, if you want. Oh, no, no, no. I'll just have to get somebody else in. Well, I'm often free during the day, so if you need someone to answer phones, just let me know. Bye.
Thanks, Felicia, but ask it for me. Excuse me? Has Felicia been asking for me? No. No, she went back to bed. She finished the book very early this morning. Yeah, I know. I was here. Oh, that's right. You were. Uh, Julia, uh, hold that a minute. What? I have a, a pretty good idea by now about what you think of me. Having this job, I mean. Gil, I don't think about anything except my work for Miss Gallant. Well, suppose you met me and I was driving a bulldozer or, or digging ditches or even answering somebody's telephones. That's a funny question. Well, no, it isn't. What would your impression of me be? Well, I don't know. I, I have to think about it, I guess. That's what I'd like you to do. Think about it. Now, here's our contract with Reginald Fearing, the English author. And since uh, Corey Publishing has published him for a number of years now, there was only a couple of changes I had to make. Good. Reginald Fearing is a delightful man. I'm looking forward to the time when I can see him again. Well, you know, he's in New York at the moment. He is? Yes, he arrived a few days ago. Oh, did you discuss the changes with him? Yes, I did, and he agreed. Yeah, he's a very pleasant person to talk to on the telephone. Yes, he is. Liz, I must make a point of seeing Reggie on his trip this time from England. Well, I'll look over your schedule and see what day you can fly to New York and visit him. Good. Anything else of importance, Peter? No, I guess that's it for the moment. Well, all right. I'll look over these changes and then I'll get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, well, Liz. Hmm? Tell me, what do you think of Peter's work here? Oh, very good work. Uh, he's intelligent. He's very personable. Most people uh, like him. Uh, why do you ask? Cass gave me his resignation this morning. He did what? He's only going to be with the company two more weeks. I is he going back to London? I really don't know, but he's starting his own publishing house, and his first client, Felicia Gallant. He stole Felicia Gallant from you to form his own oh, company? Oh, Liz, he didn't exactly steal her. That is exactly what he did do. She came here to discuss contracts with Liz, you and Corey. Liz, he was within his rights, and I haven't exactly handled Felicia Gallant well. That is no excuse for Cass's behavior. Liz, I only brought up the matter because I want your opinion about Peter Love. Now, do you think he's experienced enough to take over Cass's job? Oh, well, <clears throat> Yes, I do, yes. Uh, in my opinion, yes. Uh, I'll talk to other people in the firm and see what they think, but uh, I'll start with Elena. Good. I'm very impressed with Peter, but I would like a sampling of opinion. Right, I'll get on the inquiries right away, Mac. Thank you. Oh. Yes. Oh, sure. Tell him to come right in. Brian's here. Our production wants an answer on these figures right away by tomorrow. Can I give them a yes? Yes, you may give them a yes. No matter what you think of Cass's move, I say it's dirty pool. <laughs> oh, Brian. Hello, Liz. Uh, Brian, thanks so much for, for coming to Stephen's service. Sally and Jamie we were very touched. Well, I was very touched that they would include me. Hello, Brian. Oh, Mac. According to Liz, the service for Steve was lovely. <sighs> Mac, you would have been so proud of Jamie. He spoke beautifully, and so did Quinn. I am very proud of Jamie. All he's been through, and he's handled himself so well. Yes, he has. I, uh, I saw Elena briefly this morning. She's going to testify this afternoon. Did she seem nervous to you? Not about the custody suit. But she is concerned about you. Oh, I see. She spoke to you about my being upset about Rachel. Yes. And that's why my old friend is paying me a visit. Yes. In the light of the grief that other people are going through, I certainly have no reason to complain. Mac, if I were in your shoes, I would probably react the same way. But you have to keep in mind the condition that Rachel was in when you saw her. I mean, she'd been in surgery for hours. She had a host of injuries. She just wasn't in any shape to be thinking clearly. Her feelings about me were certainly quite clear. Elena's not at all sure that Rachel even remembers your being there. Uh, she tried to convince me of that. 
Look, I know that you want to take care of Rachel. But she needs time to work through her grief, and if she wants to do that alone... Oh, I'm not sure she wants to do it alone. She just doesn't want to do it with me. Well, it's possible that you may be wrong about that. Mac, suppose... Uh, well, suppose I go to visit Rachel myself. Oh, Brian, would you do that? Yes. Brian, I know... I know I can help her, if she'll just let me. And I know that she needs help. Cecile bought the recipe book from Ella Fitz in Wyoming. Do you know why she bought the book? Objection, Your Honor. It calls for... Did Cecile tell you why she bought the book? She said it was background for a magazine article she was writing for Bravo magazine. Now, Miss Ewing testified earlier that she had written diary notes when she was nine years old in the back of that recipe book, and that Alma and Cecile used those notes in the scheme to drive Miss Ewing out of her mind. Objection, Your Honor. Counsel is up to... Uh, Mr. Marino, if you would please keep your seat and stop objecting, I think you might like Mrs. de Poulignac's answers. Very well. I will withhold all objections for the moment. Did you see the diary notes in the recipe book? No. Did you see the ragdoll costume the cabin made to look like Blaine's home in Wyoming? No. So in spite of everyone's belief that Cecile was guilty, you refused to believe in her guilt without positive proof? Yes, I did. But you had doubts, didn't you? Yes, I had doubts, but no proof. Did you rent an apartment in the Bayview Towers? Yes. Did you ask Cecile to live with you? Yes. Why? Because I hoped we might have a chance to begin a life together again. Even though everyone you knew disliked her, distrusted her? Yes. But Cecile refused to have anything to do with me. Instead, she moved into her father's penthouse with Maggie. Yes. After Matt Corey asked her to leave his home, she went to Louie. Did you object to that? Yes, I did. I thought there was a certain element of danger in being so close to Louie. But despite your objection, she persisted in the move. Yes, she did. Objection, unless the witness has positive proof that there was danger, counsel is asking for conjecture on the part of the witness. Well, Louie had over $100 million worth of art somewhere in Bay City. It very well could have been in that penthouse. Objection! Objection sustained. Thank you. Did an attempted robbery take place in the penthouse when Cecile was alone with the baby and the baby's nurse? Yes, it did. Two men broke into the penthouse. One of them tied up the baby's nurse and ransacked the apartment. The other held a gun on Cecile and threatened to kill her unless she told him where the art was hidden. So the danger was real. And proof? Well, it's in police files as a matter of record. So what Mr. Marino calls conjecture turned out to be true. Unfortunately, yes. After the attempted robbery, Cecile and Maggie moved into your new house. Yes, reluctantly. Reluctantly? Well, I had to threaten to go to court in order to protect Maggie. And, of course, that would have exposed Louis's art collection. Eventually, the art collection was exposed when Louis attempted to transfer it to Henry Davenport. Yes. Davenport and Johann Nordman were killed, and Louis was arrested. Yes. And Cecile? Well, it was a devastating experience for her. Cecile refused to have anything to do with Louis when he was released from jail. Yes. Until she learned that Interpol couldn't touch the $10 million Louis had in his Swiss bank account. Then she rushed back to Louis's side. And Maggie? Maggie stayed with me. Just for a few days until Cecile could send for her. Well... Cecile told me that if Louie could manage to stay out of prison, she would prefer to leave Maggie in my care while she traveled with Louie. Short trip? 
Well, she said she preferred to leave Maggie with me rather than in a boarding school. Of course, the child can't even walk yet, so school days really are quite a few years away. But, of course, uh, Cecile spent a great deal of time with Maggie. No. She went for several days without seeing Maggie at all. When she finally did come to visit her, she only stayed for a little while. Did Sandy Corey spend time with his daughter? He came every day, sometimes twice a day. Then Cecile found out that Maggie would inherit all of Louis's money at the age of 21 and that whoever had custody of Maggie would earn a very large yearly income. Yes. That's when she began to express a great deal of interest in her daughter. No objection, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. The witness insists on attributing some sort of sinister motive to my client's renewed interest in the child when the fact is that the timing was absolutely coincidental. Her father no longer needed her. Mr. Marino, there was nothing coincidental about Cecile's renewed interest in her daughter. As you know, Louis St. George is quite capable of taking care of himself. As you also know, Cecile was hardly with him 24 hours of the day. In fact, you probably were with him longer than she was. She had ample time and opportunity to come and visit with her her daughter and she simply did not do it until she learned about that trust fund it is quite clear to me that her interest in her child is purely financial and as a mother my chief concern is with a child who has needs for love and guidance and comfort and I truly believe that Sandy Corey has that child's interest at heart and not Cecile <laughs> No more questions, Your Honor. Mr. Marino, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. As a mother, you say, hmm? Stay tuned for the conclusion of Another World. Now, when you talk about being a mother, you're, of course, referring to the fact that you are the mother of Cecile Corey. Of course. You make it all sound so matter-of-fact, Madame de Poulignac, as though you were the classic model for a perfect mother, when, as a matter of fact, just the opposite is true, isn't Marino, it? Marino, I've never pretended to be perfect. Uh, Cecile was born out of wedlock, was she not? Yes, she was. And her father was Louis St. George, is that not correct? Yes, but when I became involved with Louis, I truly believed that involvement was going to lead to marriage. You were young, careless, and a bit loose, shall we say? Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Marino is casting his own moral judgments upon the conduct of my witness. Objection sustained. At any rate, what you were saying is that Cecile was the result of a union with Louis St. George which was based on love and not just merely passion. I loved Louis very much. I thought he loved me as well. He deserted you and refused to marry you. Yes, he did. And then you met the Count de Poulignac. Yes. He offered to take care of me and see me through my pregnancy. And to raise the child as his own? No. His one stipulation was that I give up the child and never see her again. And you accepted that? Yes and no. I made arrangements with friends of mine in the American Embassy in Paris to adopt Cecile. That way, I knew she was being loved and cared for properly, and I could go on seeing her. Without the Count suspecting? Yes. And you accepted that? It was the only alternative I could live with. Did marrying the Count mean so much to you, Madame de Poulignac, that you were willing to turn your back on your own child? I never turned my back you on You gave her up? I made sure that she was looked after yes, properly. Yes, you had the best of both uh, um, worlds, would you not say? Objection, Your Honor. Counsel is badgering the witness. Badgering the witness, Your Honor. I'm trying to establish that the witness's conduct toward her child has been consistent throughout all the years, and that therefore she is now subject to grave questions. Objection overruled. Thank you. The witness will please answer the question. <laughs> When I fell in love with Louis, society's attitudes toward a good many things were quite different than they are today. People didn't forgive 
what they considered a woman's indiscretions quite as easily as they do now. The Count was a very kind man. And I knew that my child was in a loving home. And I hoped that someday I was going to be able to claim her for my own, which I did when she was five years old. Yes, just about that time, the couple that had adopted her were killed in an accident. So you then claimed her as your own. Yes. Did you then tell the Count that she was your child? No. I couldn't do that. I, I was afraid he would reject her. You see, it would be a violation of our agreement. But I did have my child, and I was able to give her all my love. You didn't tell the Count that she was your child, and you didn't tell Cecile either? No. And then the Count died. Did you then tell Cecile that you were her natural mother? By then it was too late. Too late? Too late to tell a child who had been deceived throughout the years, who had ached and longed for the knowledge of and the love from a natural mother who considered herself an outcast, a... a, a Objection, a, a, Your really Honor. really is not true. A pariah among her peers. That's not true. Then what is the truth, please? Cecile had a very happy childhood, Mr. Marino. She didn't consider her an outcast among peers. Well, then why not tell her the truth? Because I was sure that the truth would make her hate me. And I was afraid of that. And on top of that lie, you also withheld the identity of her father. I wanted to tell him, but it, her, but it was from the same fear that I, I couldn't yes, do... Yes, 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 yes. You, 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 you... In other words, the only reason that she knew that you were her mother and that Louis was her father was because he came to claim his own daughter. If he had not done so yes, to this Mr. day... Yes, Mr. Marino, You yes. denied her a father and a mother. And as far as I'm concerned, you have no right to say that Cecile is unfit to raise her child when your own unfitness is in grave question now. Your Honor, I loved my child. Love? You dare submit that to this court as an example of love? Your Honor, it is clear that her denial was an act of personal sacrifice for her Since daughter. Since when is personal sacrifice characterized by lying, deceit, and dishonesty? Have you, Counselor, as well as your witness, lost all sense of decency the and honor? The witness did not forsake her daughter. She your raised Honor, her. this she witness has denied Cecile the most important truth of all. You're right. I made a terrible mistake. But I did it out of love, Mr. Marino, out of love, and nothing else. of another world was brought to you by Jeff Peanut Butter. For fresh peanut taste, choosy mothers choose Jeff. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of another world. Support the American Heart Association. Chris, I was wondering what you want to do about this order here. The parts were ordered three weeks ago, and they still haven't come in yet. 